Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Nintendo Switch house. If you enjoy this video, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much and try to watch all the way to the end. Here are all of the materials that you will need to make your house. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. It's also very important that you have a cliff pig. You may not be able to complete the build without one. Featuring mountain sheep. Now that we have all of our stuff, we can get started. I'm going to recommend that you find a relevant relatively smooth cliff face. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth like this cliff face right here, but something similar will do. It wants to be about 15 to 20 blocks wide and about 6 to 8 blocks high in terms of smoothness or relative smoothness. Anyway, once you've figured that out, you're going to want to come all the way over to the right side of where you want your house to be. I'm going to start by placing six red concrete extending up from the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. Extend left one, up one, left one. Place eleven black concrete going left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 2, light blue concrete going left, 1, 2, go down 1, left, and then extend all the way down to the ground. The end result should be this. I would recommend connecting all of the light blue and the red concretes down to the ground like this. Also, extend the left and right sides of your black concrete down to the ground as well. Dig in the ground and replace that row using black concrete. Then I'm going to extend all of the light blue concretes and all of the red concretes one row towards me. So this is going to create the separation between the screen and the joy cons. Just like this. That's perfect. Let's add some buttons. If we start on the left, because it is different from left to right, you want to come all the way over to the bottom left middle Joy-Con and place a polished blackstone button. You then want to place one up left diagonally, up right diagonally, bottom right diagonally, like this. Leave a gap from the upper button, so leave a gap of one, and then place a black concrete extending out. Upright diagonally from this place another button and boom, there's one of your Joy-Cons. On the other side here, we want to start from the bottom middle again, move up one and place a black concrete. Leave a gap of one and then place another black button. And then, up left diagonally, up right diagonally, bottom right diagonally, we can place more buttons. Perfect. That, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, is pretty much the basic how-to of your house. That is the easy part done, or I should say, the hard part done, because now we have something that looks like a Nintendo Switch. We now have to dig out the center of this. I'm going to dig out five rows. One, two, three, four, five, just like this. So, the living space, for me, is going to be directly where the screen is so that we can get a nice good view of it from the outside. There's no saying that you can't, if you don't want to, include like little hidden passages here and about your Nintendo Switch, like if you wanted to have a little living space that wasn't visible from the inside and out, then um, you could quite easily hide something, like you can make a little secret room that veers off inside the Joy-Cons, or you can make secret passages, or maybe even like an underground portion. Like, there's loads and loads of things that you can do. This house is incredibly malleable, meaning you can do what you like with it. But I just like the idea of a nice, simple base that pretty much what you see is what you get. I really like the idea of that. Oh, we also have to knock out this top part. I completely forgot about that. So, another decision that you can make, other than the living space inside, is what you want to do with the left and the right and the upper part of your house. So, 
you can if you are trying to conserve materials, if you're building this in survival. And I, I think that despite the fact that we are using different colours of concrete, I think that this is a rather survival friendly house, really, because, you know, we're not using too many um, hard to get materials. But if you're trying to conserve your concrete, you don't have to dig out the walls on the right and left and upper part of your switch, and you don't have to replace them with black concrete. However, that's what I'm doing because I think that it really helps to frame the inside of the house. I think that it makes a big difference when looking from the outside like, ah, oh, that's cool. Like, it really helps to show off everything that we've got on the inside. But you might feel a little bit differently, and if you do, then that's okay. Just simply don't follow these particular steps, and uh, you don't have to do it whatsoever. So we can just have something which should look like this. You see, I think that really makes you focus in on the actual, like, the back and the floor of the build, which I, I think is the focal point. So, I'm going to destroy the floor. I'm going to replace it using oak planks like this. Uh, of course, once again, feel free to use any material as a flooring material. It really doesn't matter too much. It really is just completely personal preference. There we go. I need to make a platform inside of the build. So, if we come all the way up to the top right corner, from the top right hand corner of the room, you want to drop down one, two rows, place a row of one, two, three, four, five oak planks extending out, extend this platform across by one, two rows, then the inward part of the platform, we want to place two oak planks, and then three upside down oak stairs in front. Place oak fence on top of the upside down stairs. And then from the oak plank area, we want to place oak stairs that slowly lead and taper down to the bottom of our house. We're then going to place upside down stairs underneath the set of stairs that we've placed. So the next thing is that we are going to create a couple of holes um, in the wall here. We've accidentally already made a few and I'm just going to patch those up with some stone. But I want to make a gap here so like where this bottom set of stairs is I'm going to leave an entire row gap, destroy, place a lantern. Then I'm going to make two more gaps extending upwards diagonally. I'm going to place a lantern in the second one as well. I probably have to get some more materials but just before I do in the back right hand corner of the platform, I'm placing a light blue concrete and then a red concrete to the left. And I'm going to stick a lantern on the red concrete. In addition to that, I'm going to stick a lantern here as well on the, like, the front right hand corner of the platform. And now let's get some new materials because we're in dire need of them. Bookshelves, enchantment tables, chests, furnaces, crafting tables, cartography, fletching, smithing, a grindstone. So, over on the left side here, I want to take the three middle rows of the switch house, and I just want to dig them out. And I'm going to dig out a three by three block area. If we place bookshelves all the way around the inside of this hole, with an enchantment table in the middle... Leave an entire row's gap above the bookshelves and then destroy another three row wide. And if we just place chests, I really like how that looks. On the opposite side, I'm going to destroy the three middle rows again, but I'm only going to have a three by three block area as we have our platform, and we're going to replace it with furnaces. And I think that that looks pretty nice. Underneath these stairs and platform area, I want a general crafting area. So, starting here on the left, I'm going to have a, a crafting table, cartography, fletching, smithing. I'm going to destroy in the wall above the middle of this and place a double chest. And then, above the chest, a grindstone. This is where we've got to get more materials out. Stone cutter, light blue carpet, red carpet, flower pot... Uh, Lily of the Valley, Red Bed, Light, Blue Bed, Ender Chest, Lantern again. Um, I'm going to place a stone cutter to the right. 
Uh, in front of all of this, I want to have an alternating light blue and red carpet. So this is kind of going to just sit in the middle of the house. And of course, it kind of like mirrors the colors of the Joy-Cons. I want to have another lantern kind of just like hanging around here or maybe in front. We're, we're kind of missing a crucial, a crucial part of the crafting area in that I want to have oak fence on the left and right sides. And then a lantern hanging down in front of the crafting area kind of like this. In the middle gap that we have in this wall in between the lanterns, a flower pot with a flower in it. I'm using Lily of the Valley because it's an interesting flower. Uh, when it comes to the upstairs part here, I have a red bed and a light blue bed, of course, to sort of simulate Joy-Cons again, with an ender chest above the bed. Feel free to add anything else that you might. You might want to add uh, an anvil, a set of armor, you may want to add more storage, but I'm actually quite happy with how things have turned out. It's not too cluttered. So now I'm just going to grab the black stained glass and I'm going to seal up the house. So you may be wondering, TSMC, how is it that I actually get into the house? Or building every block, as that is the channel that we're building on right now. But <laughs> hey, what can you do? So the next thing that you want to do is, well, I'd recommend grabbing a door, number one. So, you could have a door here, on the front of the house, like where we have the glass. Very possible, you can just place a door there. You could, to the left here, devise a tunnel. And it would actually be easier if, say, we did this, if we kind of like met it halfway. So, is that right? Hang on. So, I think if we dig a bit more in... Or maybe if we dig some out here, and then if we come over here and dig a little bit in. Oh, there we go. Perfect. That's that's exactly what I wanted to do. And then we can kind of like clean this up a little bit. We can put a door here, just to the left of the Joy-Con. If you want, you can uh, just fill this in with glass. And then that way, um, you can kind of just keep like a nice simple glass screen um, you've got an easy way in and out but I, I wanted to give you guys a couple of options that's definitely one of them and if you just place a lantern here it kind of like signals hey this is how you get into the house and it's a perfectly viable way as well so we can just walk around here if you like uh, can fill that in and boom we're in our house and there you go two different choices so this is what the house will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. I really hope that you guys enjoy this one. I think that this is a really, really cool house. Not only is it survival friendly, but it's survival orientated. I think that this is really awesome. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me in the channel out very, very much. Subscribe and click the little bell next to the subscription that will ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you want to make anything else by me, check out the card system and the description below for more. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.